Hello guys, welcome to the class. Thank you for your punctuality. I really, really, really appreciate that. So thank you for being here, Marcos, Janet, William. Okay, I really appreciate your punctuality, guys. Today we have a really important topic that is about, um, it's a grammatical topic that we're gonna talk about today. So I'm gonna be doing that with you in a moment. Wait a second, my camera is... There we go. Okay. So we're gonna start uh, right now because yes, we need to cover these topics. And then remember, by tomorrow before the class, you need to complete the platform because actually they, they sent me sent me a message today talking about that, that we have to be working in section five, like we have to complete section five by today. And then tomorrow before the class is the final exam. So according to that, or just related to that, do you have any um, questions about the platform, any problems that you have had with the platform? Or is everything good? It's all good? Yeah or no? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Marcos. And I hope the other ones finish as well because um, it's very important. Remember, like coming to the classes is one thing like attendance in the school, but doing the platform is like doing the labs, doing the exams, doing everything there. Okay, so now guys, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna share my screen. I don't know, we have like a few people today, but we have to start with the class anyways. Okay, so before we start the class, you know what to do. So send the, the date to the chat, please. Privately, okay, P please just send it to me. Okay, let me see. Only two people. Good job, Adriana. Yeah, really good job. Thank you, teacher. Marcos, good job as well, but you need to switch the letters. You need to switch the letters. D first and then N, okay. When there's night, no. Wednesday, okay. Switch the, 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 the letters. Okay, and I'm waiting on the other ones. And I said yesterday, hey, we have a really important topic tomorrow. And yes, Janet, good job. But remember to send it privately always, okay. But with, with, mm, it's the same, and D, and it's D N witness die, witness die. Okay, you're missing the letter E as well. Anyways, I'm gonna share with you my screen right now because we need to cover an important topic today. So this is the idiom we have for today: a taste. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're gonna start here. Uh, can you help me reading the topic, please, Milton? Reading the date, I meant, reading the date, help me. Date, oh, maybe your microphone is off? Okay, teacher. Mm-hmm. Hey, screen. 
Uh, okay, yes. Now is Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. Perfect. Thank you very much, Milton. Yes, that's the date that we have for today. And remember, here was the problem. It's W-E-D-N-E-S. W-E-D-N-E-S. Okay. Uh, now, um, Adriana, would you mind helping me reading the topic, please? Sure, teacher. Five or four. Noun phrases. Containing relative clauses as an object. Thank you very much. Now let's go here. So this is an idiom we have, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh my God, what is happening? Ah, darn it. There we go. Okay, so this is the idiom we have for today. It's a taste of your own medicine. I will repeat it. A taste of your own medicine. Do you know the meaning of that? Do you think you know what it means? Uh, chocolate como de tu propia medicina. Mm -hmm. If it's like in Spanish, una taza, una taza o cucharada de tu propia medicina. Okay, okay, okay. And it's like uh, una cucharada de tu propio chocolate or something like that, or something like that. It's like that. So yes, that's what it means. Like for example, someone is doing something or like, for example, you don't like, or maybe you speak a lot in the work or at your workplace. And some people don't like that you speak a lot in your workplace. So one day um, while you're working, they start speaking a lot and you're like, hey, you're annoying me. I need concentration. I need to be aware here. And then they will say, this is a taste of your own medicine because it's a person doing something that you don't like to do because you do it. Okay, now I'm gonna send you a video so you can watch it really quick. Um, Marcos, you are on a computer, right? So I'm gonna send you the link here, guys. You can watch the video with him. You know I cannot play the video here because YouTube and all the stuff, okay? So I'm just gonna create one breakout room and you all are gonna go to that breakout room and Marcos, please share the video, okay? With the audio. You're gonna watch Amen. a video with movies uh, where they use the, the idiom. Hello, Glenda. 
uh, you're muted. Hi, Miss. Good evening. Good evening. What happened? <laughs> I'm okay. Thank you. What about you? I'm doing good. What happened? You're late to the class today. Always, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to send you to a breakout room. Your classmates are playing a video. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello, welcome back. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're so like just a few today. I don't know what happened, but I told you like 
today we're gonna go through a grammatically grammar i mean we're gonna go through a grammar topic so it's very important to be here anyways i'm gonna go ahead uh, with this right now oh and did you watch the video could you watch the video yeah yes. you played it okay so remember idioms you can use idioms to sound more natural when speaking in english that's gonna be different for example i told you i always tell you if you say hey cut got your tongue it's better if you say it's better instead of saying hey why are you not speaking why are you so quiet or why do you don't say anything don't you say anything so instead of saying that just say cut got your tongue instead of saying easy you say piece of cake and that's gonna be perfect now i'm gonna go with the grammar topic uh, in this moment i'm gonna, I'm gonna explain that to you the first well, the topic is noun phrases containing relative clauses. They can be used as a subject or they can be used as an object in a sentence. To explain this, I would like to divide the topic into small topics so you can understand better. For example, do you know, so the topic is uh, noun phrases containing relative clauses. First of all, do you know what is a noun phrase? That's a no? <laughs> okay, so a noun is like Maria, Pedro, Juan, Silvia, I don't know, anything, that's a noun. Diana, the teacher, whatever. A noun phrase is a noun that has more than one word. For example, if I say Carla works in the morning, that's just a noun, Carla, okay? But a noun phrase will be my friend Carla works in the morning. It's a complete uh let me let me show you here so you can see it so in this case here carla works in the morning in this part carla it's the noun it's the subject but here i want to say my friend carla works in the morning in this case i'm using a noun phrase okay so because it's it's a phrase because it has one two three words but it's just one noun it's just one person do you get it now do you understand what is a noun phrase so uh... So, so, Please let me repeat. repeat. Okay, so this right here is a noun. The subject of the sentence, Carla, it's a noun. But a noun phrase is this because it's the subject of the sentence, but it is formed with three words, just, not just one three words one two three that's why it's a noun phrase because it's a phrase it's not just one word it's a phrase and you are be, you're being specific that you're talking about your friend carla when you say carla it's just a noun just a noun when you give more information about the subject you give more information about the subject yes and you're using more than word, more than one word in the subject. Oh, I understand. For example, if you say the new students are in the class. Okay, so the new students are in the class. What is the noun or what is the subject? The new, the new student. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's not just students. Mm -hmm. So it's a noun phrase, right? Yes. Do you get it now? Yes. Perfect. Yes. yes. So let me share my screen and I'm going to show you the meaning of that. Here it is. Can you please read um, the meaning here? Let me see. Glenda, this part. What is a noun phrase? A word of group of words that functions in a sentence as subject, object, or prepositional object. Thank you very much, Glenda. Yes, so okay. a noun phrase is a group of words and they can be the subject and they can be the object or prepositional object. I'm gonna explain to you that in a little bit, but before I explain to you what is an object or a subject, I'm gonna go with examples for that. Okay, here. Can you read the examples, Janet? The little boy, the happy puppies, the building on the corner, the sharp pencil, your new friend. Thank you. So you see Welcome. in this case, guys, these are all phrases and they can be a subject or they can be an object. Okay. The little boy, the happy puppy, etc. Now, we are going to talk about a relative clause. I'm going to just say it here first. A relative clause is an extra information about the subject or the object of the sentence. For example, if I say, Carla works in the morning, that's a simple statement. But if I say, my friend Carla works in the morning, I'm being specific and I'm using a noun phrase. But listen now, I'm gonna give you examples, but I'm just gonna explain this quick. If I say, my friend Carla, who lives in San Salvador works in the morning. That's a relative class who lives in San Salvador because I'm giving extra information about the subject of the sentence. And to introduce relative classes, we can use who or that. Let me give you an example based on the one that we had already. We were saying that in this case, wait a second. Okay, in this case, this is just a simple statement. In this case, we are using a noun phrase, okay? A noun phrase, the same in this one. We're using a noun phrase. But here, I'm gonna use a relative clause. Wait a second. Sorry, guys. The dogs are barking outside and I don't know what is happening. Anyways. Okay, my friend Carla. And here I'm going to use the relative clause. Look here. Who lives in San Salvador. Yo ni siquiera tengo perros, pero como que hacen suya esta casa estos, la verdad. Ok, so, my friend Carla, who lives in San Salvador, works in the morning. Ok. So, the same statement. Wait a second.
Okay, so here, guys. My friend Carla, who lives in San Salvador, works in the morning. These three statements are the same ones. This one, this one, and this one, they are the same sentence. But in the first one, we are using just the name. Then we're being specific with a noun phrase. And here I'm giving extra information about my friend by using the relative clause. I'm gonna show you, this is the relative clause. And if you can see here, vaya, se lo puse en español rápido. El noun phrase me da extra información, solamente son varias palabras para decir el, el, el nombre, ¿verdad? El, el sujeto o el objeto. Pero la relative clause, o sea, la, clausa relati la cláusula relativa me ayuda a dar información extra. Entonces es como una oración adentro de la oración, que es en este caso esta. Y aquí, si se fijan, aquí es mi sujeto, my friend Carla. Y yo no cambio el verbo siguiente porque esto que yo hice aquí solo fue como una información extra sobre Carla. Pero aquí el verbo sigue en tercera persona porque yo sigo hablando de esto. ¿Ok? Entonces, esta oración que vemos en el medio, who lives in San Salvador, es una relative class y solo se utiliza para dar información extra del sujeto de quien estoy hablando. Ya sea sujeto o objeto. ¿Se entiende? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Now, I'm going to give you examples. Uh, we can introduce relative clauses with this, with who, or with that. Who, we use it more with people, and that we use it more, more with animals or objects, okay? So who's with people, and that is with uh, animals or objects. Now, let me share my screen to relative clauses. Yo les dije a sus compañeros que vinieran hoy que esta clase era importante. Okay, what is a relative clause? Can you help me reading here, please? William, no sé cómo está el internet hoy, William. Um, so, so, but I could try. Okay, thank you. Okay, and um, what is a relative clause? Relative clause give us information about a person or things men mentioned. Uh, defining relative clauses give us essential information, information that tells us who or what we who or what we're talking about. Excellent. Thank you very much, William. Yes, relative clauses gives, give us extra information, like I was telling you. So my friend Carla, I just know that my friend is Carla. But if I want to give extra information to, my, to the person that I'm talking to, I will add extra information with a relative clause. In this case, my friend Carla, who lives in San Salvador. Let's continue here. These are some examples. Here you see she's the woman, she is the woman, and this is the relative class who cuts my hair. I'm defining or I'm telling you who is the woman. He's the man that I met at the conference. In este caso, porque utilizamos that y no who, porque estoy diciendo que conocí. No estoy hablando de la persona directamente, que conocí. He is the man that I met at the conference. With that, I'm introducing the relative clause. So based on this, and you have it here on the platform, I'm gonna explain to you when we have a subject or an object is in a sentence. So obviously you know the subject is that the is the main person in the sentence. That is the subject. But what is the object? Do you know what is the object? What is the object in a sentence? Nope, 
You don't know? Okay. Let's talk about this super easy example. One of the first phrases we learn in English, I love you. No sabemos decir nada más, pero I love you, bien que lo manejamos, ¿verdad? So, I love you. In this statement, I is the subject, right? I. What is the verb? It's love. And the subject is you. I mean, the object is you. The object is you. The object is that person or that thing where my action lays. El objeto es donde la acción recae, guys. Like that. Just like that. For example, here, I'm telling you the example. I love you. Okay. The subject is I. The verb is love. And the, sub, the object is you. This is not a subject. This is an object. Porque recae la acción que yo hago ahí. Another example can be, I drive a car. I is the subject. What is the object? Car. Okay. The car. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Car. If I say, you listen to music. What is the object in this case? Music. Exactly. Music. So the object in a statement can be where the action lays. So the, the receipt of my action, that is the object. Can receive it. That is the object. Now, based on this, the topic we have is that relative classes, I mean, known phrases containing relative classes, they can be the subject and they can be the object of the statement. For example, the same example we were using. My friend Carla. So in this case, the relative clause with the noun phrase, it's the of the subject of the sentence, okay? This is the subject. Now, we wanna do it like this. Mm. Let me see the example in this case. O no sé si va a aplicar en este caso. No, en este caso no va a aplicar. Lo voy a borrar. Then wait a second. Vamos a hacerlo con uno que se aplique. Viajar por el mundo. Yes. One thing. Well, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. One thing. I. ¿Qué significa I, guys? ¿Saben esa abreviación? What is the meaning of that? I would. I would. Yes, exactly. One thing I liked to do is to travel around the world. Pero para que introduzcan bien la, la relative clause, vamos a poner that. Aunque no lo puede llevar si no quieren. Ok, here. In this case, one thing is the subject of my sentence, okay? One thing, because that's what I would like to do. One thing, and then that I like to do is the relative clause. Is to travel around the world is the, like, the complement of the statement. But now, this part is the subject, right? All this right here is the subject of the sentence. But what happens if I want this to be the beginning and this to be the object? Una forma en la que podemos convertir verbos 
en sujetos, ¿cuál sería? A ver si saben eso. Verbos en, en, en cosas, en sujetos. Añadiéndole el gerundio, ING. Viajar. Uh -huh. Como viajar me gustaría. Traveling. Around the world. Now, it's going to be the object. Traveling around the world is one thing that, that I, I do. Uh -huh. Exactly. You see, it's the same thing, the same one. But in this case, this is the object. And in this case, this is the subject. Okay? Subject, object. Subject, object. Aquí en este caso, este sería el sujeto. Viajar. Viajar por el mundo sería algo que me gustaría. Porque no se toma como un verbo, sino que como un nombre. Viajar. Do you get it now? Or do you need more examples? Yes, one example. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can do another one. Mm, let me think about one. Okay, yes. The best food. This is the noun phrase, the best food that my mother cooks. This is the relative clause. Is pizza, okay? Here we can pupusa. see it. Well, they can be pupusas as well. The best food is the noun phrase that my mother cooks is the relative clause. Is pizza is the complement, like the, the addition of the statement. So in this case, the relative clause with the noun phrase are the subjects of the statement. But I can do it the other way. For example, pizza is the best food uh -huh. that my mother cooks. You see, it's the same statement, the same one. In this case, pizza is the subject and the best food that my mother cooks, it's the object of the statement, is the object of the statement. Recuerden que copiar ayuda más a entender los temas, digo yo. If you're interested about that, interested about that. Okay. I'm going to give you another example. I'm just going to put this one right. Oh my goodness. No, I'm going to leave it there because it's too complicated. Okay, I'm going to do one below here. Mm. Mm -mm. Esa es quieta. solo copio eso y ya me voy a estar quietecita. No, es like... <laughs> <laughs> like... Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> It's okay. okay. Solo quería, solo quería añadirle un poco de humor. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Here, guys. Look. The best restaurant that is located in El Salvador. I don't know. Is. ¿Cuál sería el mejor restaurante? Ustedes creen. 
is Habibis. <laughs> what is that? Habibis. Habibis. I love I love Habibis. Mm -hmm. What is uh, that? H -A -B -I -B -I. It's more easy. I B I. What food? What food is there? Oh, Libanese. <gasps> it's a Libanese wow. restaurant. Wow! Yo conozco lo quilta. It's near <laughs> Galaxy Bowling. But what I is the name? Habibis. With H or with J? H. Uh -huh. H let, me, let me write it. Habibis. Estamos dándole publicidad gratis a Habibis. <laughs> okay. Habibis. They started in Berlioz City, but they. Grew? They grow? They, they grew. Oh, they grew. Uh -huh. And now they are in a salon. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we'll have it's to. It's a good restaurant. No, the best, but is a good, very good restaurant. Okay, we'll have to visit Habibis then. Okay, but making the example here and working in this example is like this. Okay, so the best restaurant that is located in El Salvador is Habibis. Now, in this case, Habibis, that is the, that was the object, it's gonna be the subject. And I'm gonna say Habibis is, and now I'm gonna use my noun phrase with the relative clause as the object because this is the verb, right? Habibis is the best restaurant located in El Salvador. Creo que lo escribí todo bien. Habibis is the best restaurant located in El Salvador. Yes. Oh, that is located in El Salvador. That is located. La relative clause, guys, puede llevar el that y el who o no puede llevarlo, como en este caso. A veces es innecesario ponerlo, pero si ustedes quieren ponerlo, está bien. Por ejemplo, aquí pondría yo, the best restaurant, Habibis is the best restaurant that is located, como que está ubicado. Ambos son correctas. That is located o si solo pongo located, también es correcto. Ok. Entonces, recapitulando, las noun phrases con las relative clauses pueden ser todas juntas un solo sujeto, llamémosle un combo, donde estoy especificando muchas cosas sobre el sujeto o el objeto. Y son un nombre compuesto porque aquí es the best restaurant, es un nombre compuesto, por lo tanto es un noun phrase. Y that is located es extra información, que esta, informa, esta, esta extra información, perdón, se le conoce como? Relative clause. Relative clause. Así de fácil. As Relative easy clause. as yes. that. He estado pensando todo el día cómo explicarles este tema de la manera más sencilla para que lo entendieran. Por eso lo declosé en cuál es un nombre, cuál es esto, cuál es esto. But do you still have questions or do you understand what I'm trying to say? I understand. I understand. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, what is it? Is it? Yeah, you understand? Glenda, do you understand? Yeah? Okay. Perfect. Now that you're telling me that you understand, we're gonna make some examples, okay? I want you to make, hmm, yeah, four examples, just four, four examples. But the four examples need to be like, actually you're gonna make only two examples. Van a ser dos ejemplos, pero van a salir las cuatro oraciones. Porque los dos ejemplos me los van a poner así como yo se los puse aquí. Uno va a ser donde la relative clause con el noun phrase son el sujeto y el otro va a ser el objeto. Y así. O sea, van a ser dos oraciones, pero al final son cuatro ejemplos. No sé si me voy a entender. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to send you to groups and this is going to be easy. I, I'm guessing this is going to be easy. And we're going to work on that. Okay. Let's go.
Milton le envía la invitación, ¿no le parece? No, teacher, no me parece. Vaya, espérenmelo. Voy a mover a un grupo, pero ahí no se mueva, porque esa no es su sala. No, no acepte, no acepte. A la dos, a la dos, a, a esa, a la dos. Va a volver aquí. No, vaya, vaya, espéreme, Milton. No se vaya a mover, ni le vaya a dar a aceptar. No le dé a aceptar porque lo va a sacar de nuevo. En esta dos, ahí sí dele a aceptar. Ahí sí le vamos a dar a aceptar.
I'm just waiting for the graduation. Yeah. But uh, I remember that you told us uh, you was English teacher, right? Yeah, exactly. That's my specialization. <laughs> Uh, you, you graduated uh, from National University. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I hope um, in this year I can get graduated because as you know, the, this university is a little bit complicated for all the, the academy issues, but I hope, I hope so. Okay. You are an English teacher, Adriana? Yeah, teacher. <laughs> oh, perfect. And and so are you studying English and French or just English? No, just English teacher, but I I mean that I mean I'm looking for academy in order to learn another language. Oh, okay, that's perfect. I tried to learn um, to learn French, but I think it's really, really, really complicated. So I was like, yeah. nah, what the, the a thing with it. It's very, yeah, teacher. And I think that the written for, it is very complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated. Did you make the example? I'm sorry, but did you make the examples, guys? Yes, miss. Uh, I don't know if it's right or if wrong, but it says the nicest beach that located in El Salvador is Los Cobanos. And that sentence I became in Los Cobanos is the nicest beach located in El Salvador. Yeah, that's a good example. And you did a really good use of the relative clause. La cambié un poco para que tuviera sentido, but yes, it's correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is the other one? Adriana, share the other one, please. <laughs> Teacher, I'm not sure about it because I have a, a question. But mm -hmm. the, the, the sentence says, Miss Nancy, who is 24 years old, is my English teacher. And that is a um, subject, right? Mm -hmm. Then as an object, my English teacher is Mr. Nancy, who is 24 years old. I am sure if it is okay. Yeah, it's 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 okay. Just is um sorry, Mr. Nancy, you said, but it's Miss Nancy. Ah, Miss Nancy. Okay. Okay, but it's correct. Good job. Thank you, teacher. Thank I'm you. gonna go to check on the other breaker room and while I do that you guys can chat <laughs> thank you miss okay Milka, who study in san salvador mm -hmm. he travel mm -hmm. every day yes 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 it's good he travel every day my brother milton who study in san salvador yes Solo recordemos que study, si estamos hablando en una third person, sería study or study? Studies. 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 Um, Let me see. I don't remember. Vaya, y aquí, mire, aquí quiero llegar al punto donde están poniendo. My brother Milton, who studies in San Salvador. No, no, no. no. He traveled today. Vaya, primero que empezar ahí con he está de más, porque el sujeto mm -hmm. ya lo tengo. Es my brother. Al comenzar sería traveling. No, y travels. Ajá, the other. Ajá, la the other one the sí sería. Other. Pero yes, ahora, yes. no, no, pero volvamos. Espérenme, 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 espérenme. Volvamos ahí arriba donde tienen San Salvador travel every day. Les dije que como continuaba con tercera persona, ¿qué le pasa? Travel. Travels. Travel. Travels. Ajá. Travels. Travels. No, 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 no. Travels. Only S. Travels. Okay. Travels.
Hello, Marcos. How are you tonight? Hello, guys. So, <laughs> Marcos, you said, thank you very much for your participation in this class. Yes, I see the, the examples and I went to the breakout rooms as well. Remember that in these cases, we don't need to repeat the subject. Porque aunque digamos toda una oración en medio del sujeto y el verbo, sigue estando unidas, porque es una cláusula relativa, aunque no existe un paréntesis. En inglés no está eso. Ok, so remember that we always just write the verb at the end, because I saw an example there that was like my brother who lives in San Salvador travel. He traveled and it just travels. Ok, because even though there is a complete statement in between the subject and the verb, it's only a relative clause, okay? Just to have that in mind. That's, that is what, that, that's why it's called a relative clause. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today. Remember, before the class tomorrow, you have to have everything complete on the platform, okay? Okay. Okay, okay guys, have a great night and I will see you tomorrow when we finish this module. Okay. Good night. Okay. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Have a great night. See you.